Hello indie game fans, interestingly, there are a number of metroidvania and action platformer indie games with demos during the Steam Next Festival, where I think that these are good to get a feel for how these games control and hence are worth a play. I did already cover the most promising title in Soldiers a couple of days ago, but if you love these genres like me, here are more titles to get your hands on. Let's begin with Chronicles of Two Heroes Amaratsu's Wrath one that allows you to switch between a ninja and a samurai using their skills and abilities in order to progress. There's certainly a vibe similar to that of The Messenger, but does appear to be more straightforward like a 2D side-scrolling action platformer. The developer does talk about secrets and hidden areas, and it does have some fantastic pixel art, making this a title of interest. We go back to the old school with Red Shot, one that looks to be evoking Metroid in many ways, where you crash land on a planet and get dragged into having to rescue a member of the planet's royal family from a supernatural invader. Our protagonist has both melee and ranged weapon options, although I do think that the focus is on the latter, since there is bullet time in this game. The pixel art is a little muddy and not as clean as I would like, with certain environments being difficult to read, but there does appear to be some nice variety in environments as well as impressive backgrounds. The non-linearity of the game is a key highlight as well, making this a cannot miss for fans of the genre. As indie development continues to gather steam globally, we will be seeing an increasing number of developers from all over the world, case in point being Cash Cool Games who are located in the UAE, with their game Shiba A New Dawn being the title of interest here. It has you playing as a warrior, who just so happens to be possessed by a jinn, having to work together to accomplish their destiny. The action and enemies look pretty alright, with a weapon wheel that allows you to swap between several options on the fly, with a share of bosses and puzzles as well. We're in for a real fight. There are parts of this visually that I don't quite like, looking a little blurry in parts, but it's always nice to see more variety in developers and I hope that the game is good. Imp of the Sun was initially slated for a 2021 release but it got delayed, so a 2022 release is fairly likely where this metroidvania based on Peruvian culture looks to share elements from the greats in the space. Namely, it does look like a combination of Ori and the Blind Forest with Guacamele, where you play as the titular character travelling across the world to defeat the four keepers that stole the power of the sun. I love the setting and the art, so I am curious about this demo as well. Time to get to work back. I got a recommendation from the community to check out Biogun since this Metroidvania entry looks excellent, so huge shout out to whoever it was that popped this in the comments.
It has you playing as a vaccine created from pig DNA injected into a dog to help save man's best friend, where you are blasting away at all sorts of nasties from the inside. This art is impressive, reminding me of Hollow Knight to some degree, with action that looks fantastic as well. Wait, wait, wait. No. One of the more unique entries is Murka, set in the US 2000 years into the future where there are human clones being kept Matrix style in pods, looking to have quite an interesting world and setting. There are elements of time and extra dimensional travel where things like the Great War of Murka exists, and it takes you on a tour of cities and locations like St. Louis and New York City, so it's interesting to see how things have changed. The pixel art and action does remind me of Metal Slug, so it looks like a very interesting entry, even if you're not American and have not physically been to these locations. An impressive entry that I was actually saving for my next Metroidvania video is Deepening Fire, but just so happens that there was a demo for the festival, so I had to show it off. Again, this certainly looks to have Hollow Knight inspiration from the UI, which is not necessarily a bad thing as long as they are doing enough to be unique. It does come to us from a Chinese developer, so the description on the Steam store page is a little rough, but it looks like a fairly standard story of a knight having to destroy monsters in a manner not unlike Ender Lilies from 2021. There does appear to be bits of salt and sanctuary in this as well, with multiple weapons and what looks like deliberate combat, stopping just short of a stamina meter, but one of interest nonetheless. You're never gonna make it, you're not good enough. There's a million other people with the same stuff. You really think you're different, and you must be kidding. Think you're gonna hit it, but you just don't get it. It's impossible, it's not probable, you're responsible. Too many obstacles. You gotta... Now, I'm no expert on game trailers, but I've seen my fair share, and the trailer music for Blue Chronicles of Telpa seems like one of the most out of place tracks that I can think of, since this is a ninja focused entry, but it looks neat, so perhaps give it a go. Because you hold the power as long as you're trying to make it. A wonderful looking hand-drawn title that sure looks like a Ghibli movie is Islet, where I covered this title when previewing upcoming games of the year, and luckily for it, it has a playable demo for the festival as well. The most unique mechanic here is that upon defeating a boss, you're actually causing floating islands to join back together, which then forms the interconnected part of the Metroidvania, which is very clever indeed. This developer's previous work, Shippo, is a mini Metroidvania with no combat that is super interesting as well, where both of these are worth your time. And of course, Eldoran gets top billing since this is a fantastic looking dark fantasy entry with, surprisingly, a grappling hook for some reason.
Again, it is like Sock and Sanctuary, only mixed in with a little bit of Dead Cells in the fluidity of the action, having a fantastic look as well, taking the number one spot. For more Metroidvania games, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.